And this recipe is in my cookbook. There's the cookbook. The dip tastes really well, too. I like the, I like the dip. Did you get some? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, very tasty. That's also in, that recipe is also in my cookbook. And uh, it is pretty, as a matter of fact, it's so good, I don't have to have some. <laughs> I love fruit salsa. It's one of my favorite things. I like the little kick at the back. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, if you don't like peaches, you can make it out of mango, you can make it out of watermelon, uh, make it out of apricots, whatever fruit, strawberries. Oh, that Very sounds good. good. All right. I hereby declare these as done. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take them out of the pan. We've got some nice brown, and that's exactly what we're looking for. We're going to leave all the stuff that's in this pan in there when we make our sauce because that's just going to add flavor to the sauce. Hey, everybody, this is the Texas chef. He's in Waco today. A few of my friends have joined. Okay. So we're going to leave the heat where it's at because now what we're going to do is we're going to deglaze our pan. And what I have here is a little chicken stock. Wouldn't it be neat if we had one I'm going to say but that's about a half a cup, I don't know which is exactly that, what you probably basic, need. You know, embroidery, but I don't want to make it more expensive. And then the canned diced tomatoes. I grow and can my own. Do you really? Oh, okay. Well, the fresher the better. Now, I mean, you can use fresh tomatoes if you want to, mm -hmm. but this is just uh, so easy to do like this. And I'm going to pour the whole can in there with the juice and everything. Alright, then. A little granulated garlic. Got a tablespoon right there. The good ingredient, which I really like, which I really like, which is ground cumin. And we're going to do about the same thing there. We're going to put in about a tablespoon. And then some chili powder. About the same amount, a tablespoon. And then we're going to season it up with just a little bit of salt. I'm not going to put a lot of salt in here now because I used that chicken broth. And that chicken broth is going to be pretty salty. And so before we go any further on that, we're going to let it come to a boil and taste it, and then we'll adjust our season. Well, thank you so much for coming out today. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to meet people that I... I see the name on Facebook, and then to see see you in person and put it together, I just I just love it. Well, I missed it when you were in Dublin. Oh yeah. And that's why I asked you, you know, um, if you were coming to Waco. Yeah. Oh, that is just absolutely perfect. What we are going to do. I did. Is we're going to use the juice of a <coughs> excuse me half a lime. Oh, yeah. 
happy to have those. All right, we're going to bring that to a boil. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and cut it up all for you. We know a lot of talented. How is Joey? She's at home. And what color is she wearing? She said she's at home. She's at home. And that is just absolutely perfect. It seems just, just exactly. We don't have to add anything to it. Do you have a blender? No. Okay. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, okay. I do. Set it up for you. Okay. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I've been a sous chef. For many years. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, not real. Not professional. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's good. Bueno? Bueno. All right. There we go. Now it starts to, to simmer. So, this is the Texas chef. Preparing meatball. Okay, so it's come to a boil. And I'm going to turn it down because I've tasted it. It tastes great. And so now what we're going to do is we are going to do take it out. I'm going to try hard not to make a mess. We are just going to transfer this into a blender. It smells good. All right. Okay, I've got this cut down to four or three. I've never used one of these before, so I'm not like real sure on the. Uh, okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to blend this up. And let me give everybody a little piece of advice. When you're blending hot food, remember that heat expands. So, you want to go slow. So, right there. You can turn, turn this first and, okay. and then push that. <laughs> Now it's going to go right back uh, into the pan. And she is the woman who makes a lot of our. She thought she did an apron for you. Yes, the Charlton apron. Oh, yes. Thank you. I've been on so many. This is her and Michael. the meatballs go right back and into it. Come to you as cell and they're going to simmer <laughs> for about 15 minutes, maybe 20, until they're all cooked through. And absorb some of the flavor of the sauce. And when that is done, man, we have Texas meatballs. And all this juice that uh, came out of the meatball that was resting, guess what? We're putting it right back. Because that's just pure flavor right there. Stir, and we're going to turn the meatballs now because we want to get them coated with all the sauce. I always have to remember my manners when I'm cooking in front of people because I'm a professional chef. And I use my hands and fingers a lot, so I just sit up here and do that. First time I did that when I was doing a cooking demo, people were like, But that's what chefs do. All right, there we go. Now we're just going to let that uh, simmer. I'm actually going to turn it up just a little bit. There it goes. It's already started. Do you cover it or just? I would not cover it. I'd leave it uncovered because uh, you also want the sauce not to just uh, simmer to cook the meatball. You also want to let it reduce. Reduce. It and if you put a lid on it, the condensation will, will make it watery. Will keep it from from uh, reducing because moisture will just keep being added back into it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that, my friends, is the Texas Chef.